Hi, I'm Gord Cook. Company name is Construction Instruction. Pleased to be here today to talk a little bit about building science and how it can help builders find new opportunities and frankly, stay out of trouble. One of the key elements we like to talk about is the changes that have taken place in the building industry. It's always been a fantastic industry, but in today's world, the changes that have taken place in building materials puts an added extra burden, I would say, on builders to recognize and respect the building science opportunities that are available to them. So let me give you a quick example of that. We all have an understanding that heat rises, or at least our homeowners would say that heat rises. But in fact, building science would say, that's not exactly true. Heat moves from hot to cold. There's as much energy flow through a wall as there is through a ceiling. And that puts an interesting perspective on the choices that you might make with respect to insulation, for example, in a building. I think we'd all recognize that over the last 30 or 40 years, we're building taller, bigger, more complicated houses with more windows, more penetrations, different cladding systems, more complicated roof lines. That puts added stress from the perspective of our number one enemy. That is moisture, rain, water, destroys buildings. So that's a significant change. Two, we've added more insulation to walls. On one hand, that sounds great. That is, we're stopping the flow of heat. That's an energy consciousness. That's wonderful. But heat was also a great element for drying of buildings. So when we add insulation, we stop the flow of heat. Now the buildings don't dry as well. So we're going to have to think about the added moisture risk and the fact that we have less potential for buildings to dry. And third, and the most important change, is our homeowners. I think you'd all agree that the expectations of consumers has gone way up. They're very demanding, rightly so. They're spending a lot of money, you're doing a great job for them, but their expectations with respect to comfort, uh, with respect to noise, with respect to air quality, has all gone up. We have to be very respectful of those changes. So for an industry that kind of prides itself on maybe not changing very often, that is builders who would say to me, I know I've been doing it that way for 20 years, we need to look at that and say, is that really appropriate in today's world? With so many things changing, around us, are the building practice we used 20 years ago still relevant for today? So we're going to strongly encourage insulated sheathing, that is exterior insulation. It's the way the industry is moving. And as a builder, that's one opportunity you're going to have to think about over the next one, three or five years. How can I add more insulation to the exterior of my buildings? Two, we need to think about air tightness, stopping the flow of air through our buildings. It's a complete waste of money, of course, to heat or cool air and then allow it to escape. But air leakage also allows in a lot of uh, noise and odors and dust and things from outside that we're not interested in as well. So we'd like to make our buildings more airtight. And three, the most important thing is moisture flow, making sure that we're integrating the flashing details, the weather barrier details to take into account that we have bigger, more complicated facades, more windows. So we have to be more careful of our water management details around those elements. Let's look then at how you might take advantage of some of these concepts of building science. The most successful builders with this have taken a very proactive approach, a very thoughtful approach. They don't look at it as thinking about their houses are bad and somehow I have to fix things. They look at it as a sense of fixing risks that they may be under but really more importantly, looking for opportunities in the future. They start by benchmarking their current construction, doing some simple tests. Maybe it's air tightness testing. Uh, maybe it's some, a little bit of air quality or HVAC system testing to get a sense of what they're building now and what opportunities and what risks might be available. Then identifying companies like Hayward and manufacturers who can help them understand where the best opportunities are. So I would really encourage you to start by benchmarking your current construction presenting that or thinking about that as a plan going forward and imagining over the next one, three, five years, implementing two or three things every couple of years to improve your houses, to be on a path of continued improvement. The changes that are taking place really no longer can be accomplished by any one builder working on their own. Really important to me as a building scientist to work in strategic partnerships, finding manufacturers, working through the distribution channel of the building supply yards, companies like Hayward, that can bring you the science, the information that you need to make sure it's applied correctly in the right order, the right systems, to make sure it all works well together, to meet the expectations of consumers. Builders often say to me, I want to build a great house, but is anybody willing to pay for it? What's really encouraging is the same things that you do to make houses more energy efficient, simultaneously make them healthier, safer, more comfortable, more durable. And because they're more energy efficient, they actually end up being more affordable. So you get to build the house you love to build, but you also get to offer your homeowner a better house for basically the same cost in terms of total operating cost. Wouldn't that be nice to think about being on that path of continued improvement, but still offering your homeowners better value?